Welcome back. I don't know about you, but I've always liked to sketch. Since before I even thought about studying architecture, I've done my best thinking with a pen in my hand. Indeed, that was one of the major factors that drew me to SketchUp in that the modeling process felt as close as I could get to sketching, albeit using a digital medium or tool. However, just because we work with digital models shouldn't mean that we stop sketching by hand. And for me, it hasn't. I still design best using pen and paper. And the beauty of the way I use SketchUp is that I can quickly and easily incorporate that analog work into my digital workflow. Let me show you how. First of all, let's just create a new SketchUp model from a blank template. So here's one here, let's go to save as, and let's call that schematic building. We will create new layers or tags as we need them. But for now, let's create one called sketches. So we can put our hand drawings on and another called building on which we'll do our modeling work. Now, the way this process works for me is that I print out the site plan and site sections, and then I scribble over them using tracing paper to explore my ideas. I'm sure you do something similar in your own practice. These sketches are always roughly to scale as I'm working over the existing scale drawings. Once I have an idea that I think could have some mileage, I scan those sketches back into the computer and then import them into SketchUp. So let's import one now to show you how that works. The first thing I always do before starting any modeling for a new project is to set up the boundary lines as well as any other restrictions such as setbacks or easements. To do that, I'll simply open the existing site model that we used in the previous lesson and I'll select the boundary lines group, Command C, Control C if you're on a PC to make a copy. Then if I go back into my schematic building and go to edit, paste in place, that should give me an accurate location and orientation from which to start building my model. Now I wanna bring in one of my sketches. Let's lock these boundary lines so that I don't move them by mistake. Right click, lock, okay. Now let's go to file, import, and here, if I change the format to all supported image types, I can bring in my plan sketch. Just place this sketch roughly on the page and I can position it where I want it, aligning the boundaries if I can. Now I need to scale it using the same process we did when we imported a PDF site plan. So if I add a rectangle to this using the rectangle tool and we select both the rectangle and the sketch, right click, make group. And let's put that on the sketches layer and call that floor plan sketch. Okay, so again, if I double click to open this group, I can delete the rectangle and now I've still got my drawing underneath. So what I need to do, if we use this same boundary line that we used before, I know that this short distance is exactly 10 meters. So I don't want anything uh, accidentally snapping to these existing boundary lines. So I'm gonna hide that layer. And now I'm gonna use the tape measure tool, click on as close as I can get to this corner. Also click on this corner over here. And you'll see down here, it says enter value to resize active group or component. If I type in 10 meters, do you want to resize the active group or component? Yes, I do. Now, this sketch is pretty much to scale. I know that that is 10 meters. So if I turn my boundary lines back on again now, simply a case of positioning this sketch using the move tool so that my boundary lines on my sketch and the boundary lines on my model align. I'm just gonna very slightly rotate the sketch like so, and that's pretty close. So what I'm gonna do now is just quickly, using this floor plan as a guide, block out the model. But to make that easier for me, I'm just gonna quickly align the axes using the axes tool over here. If I select the uh, center point, let's start with this corner over here, and align the axes with this south facing wall like so. 
So if I use my rectangle tool over here, I can snap to that origin point and roughly trace this out. Now I know that my floor plan is 10 meters wide by nine meters deep. And there we can see it's pretty much accurate. Okay, so I can push pull that up into position using the dimensions that I know and quickly. So there's the rough massing of my design. What I want to quickly do is if I turn x-ray mode on, I can see the floor plan underneath then. And I can use that simply as a guide when I very quickly rough out this model. But first of all, what I want to do is turn sketches off. Now, if I select this floor plane that I've just created and double click to select it, right click, make group. Okay, I want to call that floor for the time being. It's okay to just be on the building tag at this stage. And I want to do the same thing for the roof plane. So double click, make group, and then let's put that on the building tag and call that roof. Okay. And then the remaining four sides selected, right click, make group on the building layer and call them walls. This is just good practice for when you come to develop your design further on. So I want to give this floor some depth because of the, the fall across the site. So I'm just gonna open that up and push pull that down by 300 mil for the time being. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna quickly rough out some of the elevational treatments that I've sketched out. If you can join me in a few minutes, we'll look at how we test this design on the site. Okay, welcome back. So here, I've just very quickly, I mean very quickly, just roughed out a massing of this sketch design that I've created. There's no interiors, as you can see. It's just the exterior shell of the building, just to test it out at this stage. And um, one thing I will, show you as well is you'll notice everything's organized over here in the outliner within this walls group i've simply got these louvers on a group and i've also just drawn these dashed lines in to denote sliding doors and things and they are in their own group called dashed lines and they have their own layer called dash lines, which allows me to give them a different line type. So that's pretty straightforward. I'm sure you all know how to do that in SketchUp by now. The next thing I want to do is just test how this sketch model looks on the site. And to do that, I can use the uh, sketch design site model that we created in the previous lesson. Okay, here I am in the schematic design site model that we used previously. So I wanna bring in my quick sketch model. So all I need to do is just go to file, import, make sure that the format is set to SketchUp files and let's choose our schematic building model. So we just need to position that in place. What I'm gonna do here is just hide the sketches for the time being, and then I can use the boundary lines, which we know are the same, to position the model accordingly. Now, for some reason, it's come in slightly rotated. I don't quite understand why, but that's an easy fix. It's just to pick this point up here, snap. And there we have it in exactly the right place on the site. Okay. Because we use the boundary lines, obviously this thing is floating in midair now. So the next thing to do is just to drop it down till it meets the terrain. So again, it's just an M for move tool. If I select this bottom corner here. And then just lock the blue axes until we touch the terrain. So if I now click on the long section scene, we get an elevation. I just need to hide the sketches and right click update. Okay, let's have a look at the short section. Now we can see the elevation of our building in the context. So that was pretty easy and pretty quick, I think you'll, you'll agree. Now, say on this long section, I think that this building is getting a little bit dwarfed on the site by its large neighbor. Let's just say I wanted to increase the height of the roof. So all I need to do is just go back to my building model. And if I quickly make those changes and save this model, save. Now if I go back 
into my site model, all I have to do is select this component, right click, reload, and then select my schematic building that we just saved. Here you'll see those changes are now reflected in the model. and It kind of sits a bit more comfortably in the context. As with all design work, this is a cyclical process. So I might repeat this process several times, printing off images of this model or plans from this model, and then sketching over them before scanning them back in again and so forth until the design is at a point that I'm happy with. You'll all have your own processes for this, but I find the ease with which I can transfer between hand drawing and 3D modeling in SketchUp a real benefit in my workflow. I also might generate several versions of the same idea, and I typically also come up with several options for the design that I want to present to my client. I simply repeat the same process for each option, taking care to place them on separate layers as I go. For the purposes of this course, we'll just stick with this one option, but hopefully you should be able to appreciate now how this process could easily be scaled up. This is just what works best for me though, and you might work differently and that's okay, but I would certainly encourage you to try it out and have a play around to see how you might best integrate SketchUp into your design process in this way. In the next lesson, we'll look at how you might use SketchUp and Layout to present your schematic design to your clients and stakeholders. See you there.